Hey everyone, welcome back to Static Cardiology here on EMTV. I'll be giving you an ECG rhythm and a scenario. On the bottom of the screen, you'll see a timer for 1 minute and 30 seconds. This time closely resembles the actual amount of time you'll want to be spending on each card during an actual National Registry exam. Once the time is up, I'll be giving you an answer as well as a treatment. Good luck. 3, 2, 1. As an instructor, I'm not known for taking it easy on my students, so I'm sure you were surprised when you got a relatively straightforward card. Um, so let's take a look at the rhythm here first and identify it. So right off the bat, it's pretty easy to see that this is going pretty fast. Um, I'm not going to bother counting it because I listed the heart rate in the scenario itself. It's 230 be beats per minute. Next thing you're going to notice is just how wide these complexes are. I'm not seeing any real P waves here at all and this super wide QRS complex is gonna lead me to believe that this is coming from somewhere in the ventricle. So no P wave, wide QRS means we've got rid of the sinus rhythm, we've got rid of the AV, AV node. So what's left is your ventricular rhythms. This is well over 100, so my diagnosis here for static cardiology would be ventricular tachycardia. You could be a little bit more specific and say that this is a monomorphic VTAC, but ventricular tachycardia is A-OK. -okay. Now, I know a couple of you are wondering, well, why isn't this a polymorphic VTAC? It almost looks like it's rotating a little bit like a torsades would. What you're seeing here is actually patient movement. And the reason we know this is because your rhythm that stays relatively underneath this line here that I'm using is kind of a reference. Suddenly now the rhythm is over the line. And if you look underneath, the rhythm is then under the line or very close to the line rather in certain areas. So this would lead me to believe that this is more caused by patient motion than an actual like twisting around the axis. And that's why I would call this one monomorphic. Let's go ahead and take a look at the scenario now and see if this patient is stable or unstable. So we're going out for a trauma, essentially. Now this card is like my take on Commodio Cordis, but instead of going into V-fib, this patient goes into VTAC. Uh, let's take a look at the scenario. So 18 year old male with chest trauma, hit in the chest with a baseball. Uh, he is unresponsive, but you can feel a weak carotid pulse. Now this is important because VTAC can exist with or without a pulse, and having that pulse there will change your treatment dramatically. Vital signs are as follows, blood pressure is 84 over 60, pulse of 230, SpO2 89 on room air, and blood sugar is 110. Rhythm identification isn't the only thing that matters in static cardiology as far as uh, scoring points and getting the cards correct. You do have to treat this patient appropriately. When we're deciding what algorithm to use in static cardiology, we need to first determine if the patient is stable or unstable. For unstable criteria, I use the acronym CHAD. And this of course stands for cardiac insufficiency, hypotension, alteration of mental status, and dyspnea. Based on the patient's presentation and vital signs, 
This patient meets several criteria for CHAD, so my final diagnosis for static cardiology would be an unstable monomorphic VTAC. Now let's go ahead and look at the treatment. All static cardiology treatment will begin the same way, by regurgitating the mantra, scene safe, BSI, IBO2 monitor. We'll then ventilate the patient with a BVM using high flow oxygen. And then because our patient is unstable, and so the old saying goes, unstable gets the cables, we'll go ahead and select the sync button on our monitor after of course attaching the pads because we're going to use the synchronized cardioversion function. We would consider sedation, but this patient is unresponsive, so sedation's already taken care of for us, but it makes you a bad person if you don't at least consider it. After hitting that sync button, select our energy, and for synchronized cardioversion, starting at 100 joules is a safe energy setting to begin at. We'll then press charge, and then press and hold the shock button to deliver the energy. We'll repeat cardioversion as necessary up into a maximum of 360 joules. Finally, for grins and giggles, we could say we're also going to insert an advanced airway. And that's it. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more static cardiology videos. And definitely make your own playlists using my videos so you can create your own custom decks to practice with for your national registry exams. Until I see you next, have a good rest of your night.